functions. You may previously have learned that functions are formulas. For example, we have the function fx equals to sine x, or we might have the function gx equals to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Alternatively, you might have been taught that a function is like a machine. It takes in input and it spits out output. Let's see what the renowned mathematician Robin Williams thinks about this. Excrement. That's what I think. This. Now I want you to rip out that page. Go on. Rip out the entire page. You heard me. Rip it out. Go on. Rip it out. In this video, I'll teach you the correct way to think about functions. As it turns out, this correct way of thinking about functions is much simpler than thinking of them as formulas or as machines. A function f from the set a to the set b is simply a rule that assigns each element in the set a to exactly one element in the set b. Let's consider an example. Suppose the set A consists of cat and dog, while the set B consists of egg, fish, and goat. Then as stated, what a function f would do is to assign each element in A to exactly one element in B. So for example, the function f might assign cat to fish and dog to goat. Here's how we can express this function f in writing. We write that f of cat is fish and f of dog is goat. What we've just written down simply says that the function f assigns the element cat in A to the element fish in B, and the function f assigns the element dog in A to the element goat in B. Let's try another example of a function, but we'll stick with the same sets A and B. Let's call this new function g. The function g maps cat to egg and maps dog to egg also. We can write this down as g of cat is egg and g of dog is egg. Again, what we've just written down simply says that g maps cat to egg, and g also maps dog to egg. So again, a function from the set a to the set b is simply a rule that assigns each element in a to exactly one element in b. When talking about any function, it is very important to specify what the sets a and b are. Indeed, it is so important that the sets a and b have special names. a is called the domain of f, and b is called the co-domain of f. Hence, a function f is a rule that assigns each element in the domain to exactly one element in the co-domain. So a function is really and simply nothing more than a simple assignment rule. It assigns for each element in the domain exactly one element in the co-domain. We would now like to emphasize four points regarding functions. The first point of emphasis is that every element in the domain must be given an assignment. The important word here is every. So in the case of our function f, we saw that the domain was a, which consists of cat and dog. So for f to be considered a function, it must be the case that f assigns to cat and also to dog some element in b. f must assign each and every element in the domain a to some element in the co-domain b. So in the case of our function f, we assigned cat to fish and dog to goat. So f was indeed a proper function. In contrast, suppose that we have instead a function called h. h again assigns cat to fish. However, this time the function h will not assign dog to any element in the codomain b. In this case, h is in fact not a function at all. This is because it fails to assign each and every element in the domain to some element in the co-domain. Now for our second point of emphasis. The second point is that each element in the domain is assigned to exactly one element in the co-domain. No more and no less. So in our example of f, we saw that the function f assigns cat to fish and dog to goat. So in this case, f was indeed a proper function. Suppose instead that we modify the function f a little. We continue to say that the function f assigns cat to fish. But now we also claim that the function f also assigns cat to egg. With this modification, f is no longer a function. This is because we have assigned cat to both egg and fish. But this violates our second point of emphasis, which is that each element in the domain is assigned to exactly one element in the codomain. Nothing more and nothing less. Let us now move to our third point of emphasis, which is that an element in the codomain can be assigned more than once. 
So, earlier we gave the example of the function g, which assigned cat to egg and dog to egg also. So here we see that the element egg in the codomain b is actually assigned twice. There is nothing wrong with this. This is perfectly fine as a function. g is a perfectly proper function. Our final point of emphasis is that an element in the codomain might not even be assigned at all. So again, returning to our function g, we see the egg was assigned twice, and in contrast, the elements fish and goat were not assigned at all. Again, there's nothing wrong with this. There's no requirement whatsoever that every element in the code domain must be made an assignment. So to repeat our points of emphasis, the first point was that every element in the domain must be given an assignment, and moreover, it must be given exactly one assignment, no more and no less. Further, elements in the code domain can be assigned more than once, or they might not be assigned at all. Let us now focus on our final point of emphasis, which says that some elements in the code domain might not be assigned at all. We can now take this opportunity to introduce a new term, which is the range of a function. The range of a function is simply the set of elements in the codomain which are assigned. So, for example, in the case of the function g, the range of g is precisely the set which consists of just egg, because egg is the only element in the codomain b that is made an assignment. Similarly, if we look at the function f, the range of the function f is precisely the set which consists of fish and goat, because fish and goat are the only two elements in B which are made an assignment. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at why Robin Williams gets so upset when people think of functions as formulas or as machines.